my man, Edwin Okendo. Uh, brother, it, it's been fun because we've been on a journey together for several months. Um, I know we were working through the boot camp and and even you know, it's when, it, when I look at things that you're doing to win, that's, that's part of what I love about this podcast is we have so many loan officers from across the country, from all walks, you know, some just getting started, some veterans. Um, and I just thought, let's just jump on a, a quick podcast. Uh, I know like in May, June, July, you've kind of been in that um, half a million, 700,000 and then in August, just funded 2.5, right under 2.5 million. And it's like this, this increase in business. And I thought, you know what, let's just talk a little bit, man. Let's talk about what you think has really helped you the most. What are the two or three things that are helping you uh, get more business? So first, for anybody who doesn't know who you are, tell us a little bit about your journey getting into the mortgage business and to where you are right now. So, and also what market you serve? Uh, that's that's gonna that's longer than this podcast can allow, man. All right, let's do it in about three minutes yeah. or so. Like, give us yeah. an so, abbreviated. So, so, so I started. Uh, I was working at a pizza shop, man. Um, and one day after my shift was over, I took a walk down to the local bank. I went to deposit my check, and I asked, "Are you guys hiring?" And I was in high school at the time, so they did an yeah. internship program. I went through the internship program. Things progressed. And then somebody offered me a position to be a loan officer. I didn't know what a mortgage was. They sent me to the training. I did it, got my license. Yeah. yeah. And then fast forward, here I am. Man, I love it. Hey, what market are you in? What area of the country? I'm in the, in Central Florida, Haines yeah, City, Florida. I love, it. I love it. Hey, and listen, we linked arms through the boot camp. You jumped into one of the boot camps. And then from there, you were telling me some of the things that have really helped you with your business. To give me one or two things. And then how could somebody who's listening today say, man, I could easily do that. That's something I could do. Uh, no, number one is going to be mindset. Okay. Um, you, you need to, you need to really, really um, acknowledge and accept that you are capable of doing this. Um, you need to block out all of the noise of people trying to convince you that you're not worthy of doing it. So mindset is, is, is number one for me, uh, removing the negativity and the noise and then the second thing is making sure that you have a plan. Mm. Um, if you don't have something to stick by and to keep yourself accountable to, um, mm. it's very easy to veer off of your, your 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 road that you're trying to take. Hey, and talk to me about mindset. So, what what do you think specifically about mindset has be, has shifted in you? The the way that I talk. Um, yeah. Real quick, do you yeah. know who Bill Bruckner is? I don't know. You've never heard of that name? I don't think so. Bill, Bill Buckner is a, a, a baseball player okay. in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill Buckner in an interview was asked, um, you know, he, he, he was asked something and here's was his response. The dream is to win the, the championship. The nightmare is to lose because of a ground ball that goes through your legs. Mm. Can you believe that a ground mm. ball went through his legs. And as a result, the other team won the championship. Wow. Why, why do I say this? It, he voiced that negativity. Mm. You can, mm. you can talk to yourself all you want if you can keep it inside. But yeah. the minute that you put that out in the universe, it's powerful. What you say carries weight. So me, I used to actually say, listen, I'm not really interested in being a top producer. I'm not, that's not what my heart is. But you know what? That's a negative. That's a negative yeah. sentence. You shouldn't say that because you know what? That's exactly what's going to happen. And mm. I've heard you say this before. You you will find what you're searching for, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm over here voicing that I don't want to be a top producer, then guess what's yeah. not going to happen? So I yeah. change that. I yeah. am a top producer. I will continue to be a, a top producer, and I'm going to help others along the way. I love that. Hey, you know what? It I, a great example of this is this for everybody who is listening right now. Look where you're at, and look for everything near you that's brown. And so, what do you see? You know, if you look around you and you see, and I'm looking for brown. And then now, here's what I want you to do: if you're not driving, close your eyes and tell me what you saw around you that was red. You won't find it. Because you weren't looking for red, you were looking for the brown. And man, there's there's such a powerful thing. And number one, 
We do, man, our past experiences, what we've walked through the negative, you know, maybe you had a deal blow up and you heard something negative and it's like all of these experiences give us a framework and that framework begins to change uh, our perspective for what we're looking for. And so, you know, one of the things is, is beginning to understand that mindset is about looking for the opportunities uh, in our business each and every day. And so many of us step over opportunities because we weren't even looking for them. And uh, man, that's a big one. So mindset's a big deal. Hey, and talk to me about like, so you begin to speak things into like, just, Hey, I'm a top producer, man. I've, I've got what it takes. Uh, people are looking for me and I'm looking for great people. So you, you begin to reprogram what you're looking for. And then talk to me about plan. Like what's something like very tactical that, that has helped you as well. When you talk about plan, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is that I have to speak to a certain amount of people in this case, prospects, um, yeah. qualified agents, past client database, in order for me to reach the goal that I deserve to have, right? So to meet. So, you know, for example, I want to meet with at a bare minimum five new prospects a week. That's that's mm. my minimum. Yeah. This yeah. week alone, I've met with 11. So for, for me, for me, yeah. that's amazing. Will it be like that all the time? No, I acknowledge that. But at a bare minimum, I have to get five. And I don't, if I don't have five, you bet, you bet your bottom dollar I'm going to find that five. Man, I love So, So yours really in building a plan was understanding the math behind if I meet with five qualified agents each and every week, you're going to achieve a certain level of success that you're, that you're really, man, you, the results you're getting are just remarkable. And so it sounds like even just the clarity around, you know, I don't know about you, but when I got in the business, there wasn't, and this, mine was 23 years ago. Nobody was saying, Hey, if you do this, this, and this, you'll get this result. And Oh, by the way, it's proven across thousands of loan officers and every market in the United States. So it's not, it's not a hoping that, you, you know, we talk about this, Edwin hope's not a strategy. I hope I did enough to actually get to my financial freedom and to get to the right people who can actually refer me business. And, and so what it sounds like is you've really lasered in on what's the right activity. Hey, l let me ask you this. So you understood for you, it was like, Hey, at a minimum, I got to meet with five qualified agents each and every week. How did you get past? Cause you, you I bet there was some fear, some anxiety, some call reluctance. Um, like, like, how did you get past that? You find a who? Talk to me about that. What do you mean by find a who? Um, I am. Let's put it this way: if you put if you if you put me in a room where I don't know anybody, yeah, I'm going to be in the corner. I'm not going to okay. introduce myself to anyone. You put me in a room and I know somebody, I'm going to gravitate to that person. If that person introduces me to someone, forget yeah. it. I got the room. I I can do that all day long. So I'm also aware of who I am and what I'm about, right? So if I know that about myself, find a who, find that person that loves making the calls, mm. give them instructions. This yeah. is what I'm about. Here's who I am. I want to be able to meet with these people and talk about this. Okay, great. Cool. Now I can focus on what I can control and what I know I'm good at. Mm. Hey, so, so listen, so your minimum standards five, you got 11 you've had this week, by the way, rock star dude that you know we talk about this a lot if you want to get there faster it's just more reps that's, that's it, it. That's you know it. when you're, you're 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 driving from houston to beaumont i can walk i can ride a bike i can drive a car i can jump in a helicopter or sometimes i want to just jump in a quick jet trip that gets me there in 20 minutes and and how you accelerate your results is simply by more contacts more conversations more um, of doing the right activity. So, Hey, you found a who, so do you have a caller? Like is somebody helping set your appointments? Talk to me about it. Yep. I have somebody that is uh, focusing on my qualified agent list Yeah, and also focusing on my past client database. Dude, that's um, awesome. you know, yeah. it, it, I, I hear this, this term a lot, anything worth doing yeah. is worth doing messy. Right. So it, sometimes us as loan officers, we're, we're guilty of this, you know, Oh, I don't like that script. Oh, I don't like this. Or I don't like that. You got to stop. You got to yeah. stop. You, you humble yourself. Let it happen. Fix things as they occur. Mm. But at least it's happening, right? I, I, I'll tell you straight up. 
the first couple appointments, I was like, man, this is kind of like clunky, but I had communication. I'm going to tell you this after that communication, it's been amazing. Yeah. I wake up to a filled day of activity. Mm. Steve, do you know how important that is for a loan officer to have the activity that produces results, not activity that creates busy work? Mm. No, I'm worth more than that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Hey, and I love it. And for the people who don't know what a qualified agent list is, is it's agents in your target market that are doing at least eight buy side transactions a year or more. Um, so we classify them and that's something we talk about in the boot camp. like who, because who you go after matters, you know, Edwin, what part of what I think about is this, some of the listeners, some of the people in this industry, they're doing activity, but they're hoping they're going to get the right results. It's just the wrong people. And that's where it gets to be busy work. Hey, and here's the example I use a lot is if you got an agent, you know, like in trust, you've done business with, there's a great relationship, but they close four transactions that are by side a year. Look out of four, they're going to only be able to refer you about two because the other two are going to pay cash. They're going to yep. already have a lending relationship, but so they got four, they love you. They'll send you everything they can. They can send you two. And we know the average is from a relationally referred lead, we're going to close about one in four. And so here's the question. You follow up with them every week. You continue to nurture the relationship. And the problem is, are they going to close a deal with you this year or next year? And I don't know about you, but two years is too long to figure out if I, because you're again, doing the right activity just with the wrong people. And it doesn't mean we don't know, like, and trust them. We've got a whole uh, follow-up process, six simple steps. Uh, It's high tech, high touch, low time activity to keep your unqualified agents top of mind where you're top of mind, but in your day-to-day core prospecting time, it's got to be with the right people. And I love that, man. Um, So you found a who, you got a dialer who's making outbound calls. They're booking appointments with qualified agents and past clients. And so where you were feeling anxious with doing it yourself, you just said, I'm going to hire a who to do what they're really good at. And when I get the appointment, I'm going to land that appointment and build a relationship. 100%. Dude, I love it. Hey, you were talking about something earlier. What were some of the things you you told me? We uh, You were saying, hey, Steve, my, the, the calendar is a big deal. Um, you know, I did a big study on the difference between motivation and discipline. Motivation gets you started. Discipline is what gives you continued results. And Edwin, the number one characteristic of discipline's routine. I was really, I wasn't expecting that. But now that I've thought through it, I'm like, well, of course it is. What you do every day in a routine is really discipline. So talk about how you shifted some things in your daily and weekly calendar to really help you stay focused on the right activity? Well, when I wake up in the morning, obviously in my calendar, there is a section where it's a little bit of me time. I got my cup of coffee. You know, I'm a man, I'm a man of faith. So I'll read a couple of scriptures here and there to get my my mind ready for the day. I I take my son to the bus stop. I have meaningful conversations with him while we're going to the bus stop. After that, I'm meditating on my way back to the house as I take that walk. And then in the calendar, when I sit down, who am I speaking to today? We have one of the benefits of having Redder um, as a um, software, and then I'm able to know who I'm having that who I'm having the conversation with, right? So they close 22 buy sides, or they run a team, or they don't. Then I can tailor that conversation accordingly. Mm-hmm. I don't worry about what loan is closing today, what loan has to go to underwriting today, you know, this or that. That is going to be on red time, not green time, right? Mm. Because why? I have a team that is supporting yeah. Yeah. what 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 keeps the engine going, right? Mm. They all understand where I'm at in my life and where I want to be business-wise. And I think that's very important. It, it, you, you have to have the necessary support. You have to find your tribe. I've yeah. been blessed enough to have that support here where I'm at. I love it, man. I love it. And so you, you, there's something about when you wake up and your calendar tells you what to do. Absolutely. Not, not whether, you know, because I, I think when I used to hear calendar, Edwin, at first, because I'm a, if anybody knows the disc assessment, it's, you know, it tells you your natural behavior styles and uh, a D is dominant driven an I is relationship C's are compliant. Um, S's are steadies. 
Um, and you know, what's interesting is when somebody, this was probably six or seven years ago, when I really began to unlock the power of that calendar and it telling us what to do and refining it every week. Um, at first I was like, dude, that's so restrictive. But what I've learned over the years is Edwin, when all I got to do is wake up and execute because my calendar by design reflects the priorities that give me the most results, brother, it's such a freeing thing. It's like, it okay. Is. That's, what, that's all I got to do today. And when I do that, you know what I can do? I can walk to my light switch, um, which literally I used to have this placard right underneath my my light switch. And it'd say, I did my best and my best was good enough. And and when you're, you've executed your calendar because it reflects green time prospecting and the right times throughout the day for what you have. Um, and we talk about that in the boot camp. You know, we talk about personal priorities, family priorities, selling priorities, team priorities. And when your calendar tells you what to do, man, it's just, am I, am I committed enough to show up and execute every day? That's it. That's it. And it's very important that you understand that no matter how you're feeling, yeah, you got to do it anyway, man. Yeah. You got to do it anyway. That's, that is your commitment. If you want to reach the goals, if you want to make the sacrifices that are necessary to make, that's it. Show up, execute. Yeah. Hey, listen, so how did you identify um, how many meetings you needed with qualified agents every week? You're, like, you, what? You, there's a there's a fast action ninety day plan um, yeah. that, that you made available to us, and it it, it opened up my eyes, man. You know, when, yeah. when you're able to be a hundred percent commission, yeah, and be able to predict your income, ooh, ooh. blew me away, brother. It yeah, blew me away because you have to have this many conversations. Mm. And as a result, this many are going to result in a meeting. And as a result, these many meetings will convert into a transaction. So if I already know what I need to do, then I already found the who to make that happen. I already had that conversation. They know the goal. They know the requirement. I come and execute, be mm. consistent Held, hold myself to my calendar. There's nothing but success coming. Man. Hey, you know, at, and I wrote that. I love that predictable income. That's, that's what it does. You know, when you, when you know the math and then you know what to do and you show up and you do it. Hey, let me ask you this. So you've been implementing all this structure into your business. How, how'd you do it? Like what, what were the things that kept you, uh, you said something earlier, it was accountable. I love that word. Although listen, some people, you hear the word accountability and you hear somebody beating you over the head with a stick. You hear negative. You hear somebody hollering at you, cussing at you, telling you to get down and give me 50 pushups. But that that's not what accountability is. That's belittling, in my opinion. That There is an accountability. Look, I was reading, it's in the, I think it's in, a, I was reading a book and, and I'll never forget it talked about this. Accountability is the life stance. Accountability is literally how you approach every single day and knowing that if I lean into this, it helps me get to my desired result. So how did you lean into account accountability and, and staying committed to, to something that was maybe a little uncomfortable in the beginning? I have a responsibility. Mm. I just have a responsibility. You know, uh, I'm married to my beautiful wife. Yeah. I have a 13 year old daughter. Uh, yeah. I have a nine year old son. Mm. those those people depend on me man yeah um and, and i don't have the luxury of of um allowing them to suffer or mm. allowing them to not have the life that they deserve to have that, that that's not just not in me yeah. so so i have a responsibility to them yeah. to provide and yeah. make sure that they're happy man yeah man that's that's a uh your why has gotten bigger than the pain of getting started that's yeah, it. that's what I think about. There's two pains, the pain of being uncomfortable and the pain of regret. And um, man, it's interesting when when your back's against a wall or when you realize, hey, I've got no other choice. There's no plan B. My wife and I say it like this to each other. There's never a way out. There's only a way through. And right. so, you know what? We're going to find a way through. And man, hey, I got to tell you, it's been so fun to be on your journey and to Thank be you. able to be a part of your story, man. And when when you're going from you know five six seven hundred thousand dollars a month to over two million dollars in fundings, and and building a real business that doesn't require, it, it it's not chaotic. It doesn't require you to be in the middle of it. It's just very simple 
steps that we can take in our business. And listen, for our listeners, it's not your fault. Nobody taught us. Um, but what you can do is take massive action and say, you know what, today's the day. Today is sure. the day that I began to shift my business into something that's absolutely remarkable. Hey, give us some closing thoughts as we wrap this up. I, I would say um, you are worthy. Wow. You are worthy of being successful. You are mm -hmm. worthy of being able to provide for your family um, and, and, you know, remove the chaos. Just like Steve said, we weren't taught, man. We weren't taught this stuff. Um, so, so you are worthy. Be accountable to yourself. Put a plan together. Stick to that plan. And man, if you need a, a good kick in the butt, my number is 407-401-3950. Let's talk. I love it, man. I love it. Hey, well, brother, I gotta, I just gotta tell you how much I've, I've enjoyed our time together. Grateful, uh, just to have you share what's been helping you break through and, and really see such big results and success. So thank you for being a part of our story, man. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Hey, the, the thing that I really, I love that. I love what he, what, what Edwin was saying about the predictable income. And if any of this podcast resonated with you, um, and you'd say, hey, I'd be interested in what you're talking about with the eight week uh, boot camp. We do a virtual boot camp that's helping so many people just like Edwin. And I believe it can help you um, really jumpstart what you might do in six to 12 months. You can do in a short eight week period. And if you say, Steve, man, this resonated with me, go to loanofficersuccess.com, success. Dot com. Hey, there's a couple of pieces of information. Just fill that out. And then when you hit submit, it'll go to a calendar. You want to jump on a 15 minute call and talk about would a boot camp be something that could help you uh, build some of the structure, get past call reluctance, learning what to say, when to say it, um, learning how to identify who's and the right people uh, to really grow and see massive results. Go to loan officer success dot com. Hey, and I got to tell you, I'm so grateful to be on the journey with each one of you. Keep showing up every week. Uh, we're dropping great episodes that I believe will help continue to encourage and inspire you to take massive action because here's what I know. You're not a victim. We are true champions and we're winners. And even in a tough market or even in a good market, uh, you can have great success uh, with just a couple of small tweaks in your business. I love what Jim Collins said. Uh, in Good to Great, a book he wrote, it's not the biggest changes that make the biggest impact. It's usually the smallest tweaks, maybe a tweak to one of your conversations or a tweak to how you're meeting with agents or even understanding the numbers that move the needle to make sure you're not busy, but you're effective with your time, loanofficersuccess.com, and we'll see you on the inside. See you.